in this episode of TBS, we're launching a new product. And this product is gonna help you to monitor the health of your network. And you can see how we're doing this inside the Empire State Building. Now, who's launching this product? I'll give you a hint. Do you know who they are? Keep watching. And he went, he went way off script, so we can actually throw away all the Good afternoon, good to see you again. Um, as you know, in the basement, we are meeting our friends in the wireless industry. And today we're meeting a longtime old friend. It is our friend from Ekahau, who is the VP of product management. Sylvia, do you remember him? Oh, yes, I do remember. And I think it was quite a while since we didn't see each other like face to face but last time we saw each other was actually last real Ooh. event can you imagine guys yes 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 and uh we're talking about ansi the vp of product management of ekahau ansi you have by far the best fake background i've ever seen in any of your video conferences this is an amazing fake background how did you do that Thank you. Well, it, it's good to be here. It's, uh, I, I spent a lot of time in building this fake composition. So every now and then you see a fake dog walking on the background. That was the, that was the hardest part. Wow. Well, you guys know about uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning in Echo. So that's probably this is where, where you learned spent it. last year, last 12 months. <laughs> awesome. Good to have you with us. It's good so, to be here. It's, I, yeah. I can't believe it was a year ago. It, it felt like yesterday. It, it is. Thank well, you for the invitation anyway. Yes, so good to have you. So, Sophia, what are we going to talk about today? Yeah, so actually we have we've prepared a few questions uh, to Ansi that we actually really curious about and actually about uh, Ekahau portfolio. When our customers and partners, when they think first about Ekahau, the first thing that comes into their mind is like reliable, building reliable uh, wireless network design. But uh, when we think about wireless network lifecycle, like the project itself, it's much more than just a design or planning phase, right? And as far as I know, Ekahau uh, has a lot more to propose. Is that right? That, that is correct. Um, it's exactly like you said. I mean, you, you know, um, Wi-Fi is, is, uh, is a business critical resource. I mean, you should know it because you guys are selling it, but the, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's something that the, the business, business decisions, decision makers are, are actually uh, nowadays more and more aware of that. It has, to be, it has to be reliable and up and running all the time. And, and you know, we all had our experiences with when the, when Wi-Fi is, is behaving unexpectedly. And, um, mm -hmm. the, but the fact is that the, the Wi-Fi can be fast performing, reliable every single day if it's being designed and maintained properly, right? So, so of course, you know, we have a, we have yeah. a long history and long background in, in, in designing networks and developing software for, for network design. But um, we are actually also talking about how do we, how do we support the different stages of a, of a life cycle of a network. So, so apparently every single network starts from the design and then, then you go ahead and you deploy and you build it. But then, and after the deployment, there's the validation part. So, so that's when the, the network moves into, into production, right? But it's, it's not really sufficient to do only that. In order to make sure that the network is, is working as it was supposed to be, it should be maintained. So from time to time, check how the things are, you know, environments change the physical environment changes the art of environment changes so something that was designed to work a while ago doesn't necessarily mean automatically that it works perfectly today so that's why we are advocating for um, for example regular surveys to make sure that how the um, network works or from time to time you also need to do troubleshooting and, mm -hmm. and then eventually uh, the whole idea is that we are basically connecting all of these separated silos by using a cloud backend. So, mm -hmm. so basically the information that we use in surveys and troubleshooting can be also used in design. So for example, when you want to redesign, or for example, nowadays when six gigahertz networks are coming, they are just around the corner, there is going to be some networks are reaching the end of their life cycle and there's going to be a next generation network. 
you can actually use mm -hmm. all the learnings and all the data that you have gathered in the past to feed into the design phase of the new network. And that, that's quite exciting. So previously, previously it was really, if you would take every step in the network lifecycle and that was really independently. So you were designing and then end of project and you would implement end of project. But what you're telling me now is that you're bringing those phases closest together. Do I, do I get that right? Absolutely. So, so they, they shouldn't be, uh, there's no need and they shouldn't be in the independent individual silos. You can basically combine all of this information and it becomes much more valuable than doing this in isolation. Nice. And uh, yeah. One sidestep here is um, you have a, an, an even improved uh, relationship now with, with, with Cisco. Uh, and and um, I think you developed a tool together with Cisco. Is that correct? This is, this is correct. And it's actually, uh, I'm, I'm very happy you brought it up because it's a, it's a, it's a great example of the, of the same life cycle thinking. So even when you are uh, quoting networks, when you are in the, in the kind of an early phase, early phase of uh, or discussing a, a network, network purchase, um, there is no reason why, why that part couldn't be part of the whole, uh, whole chain as well. So can I show you an example? Yes, please. We'd love to. So, so the, the tool that we have created together is called um, Cisco Catalyst Wireless Planning Tool. So it's basically utilizing Ekahau planning software. And uh, we basically integrate it, first of all, uh, to, to the cloud backend so that you use it via browser. But we've also integrated to the Cisco CCW so that you can automatically create build up materials out of it. So when you're building your bill of material based on Cisco equipment, you can immediately from there register the project and, and do your, uh, uh, your CCW registration uh, in our tools. Is that, is, that, is that the use of that? Correct. And, and the, the bill of material is, is based on, on actual design. So, so obviously we, we do it automatically. So, so uh, it's a, it's a it's a very good starting point for, for building a, a high-grade professional network. Wow, that, that's really good, actually. I think it would simplify my, simplify my life, at least as a systems engineer, because uh, most of the time when uh, I've been asked to prepare uh, a bill of materials, this is the first thing that comes into mind. OK, how can we do planning? And this is something that people expect us to provide, and it really simplifies life. Uh, well, thank you for this. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's a, it's a great collaboration. So, so do you guys see my screen? Yep. We can see your screen absolutely. I call it "How do you design a network in Empire State Building in three minutes?" <gasps> so, <laughs> that's a good reference customer. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Well, I, 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 I may have cut some corners here and there, but uh, well, you'll see. So you use it uh, with the web browser, like I mentioned, and it, it's very easy. You, you start by, first of all, clicking a button, create a new project. That's the green button on the left. And then we start filling out the customer details. So in this case, we are planning for Empire State Building. There we go. And it is in USA and it's actually on Fifth Avenue. Okay. Then we have some background information related to, related to the um, customer. So we fill in here the vertical and then some information like, for example, existing Cisco customer using DNA Center. Okay. Uh, what are the existing access points and what is the problem that we are trying to improve with the new design? Okay. I've selected those, then I click next. So now it's time for the requirements. So I'm gonna say, in this location, it's going to be video 2K and above. And, and then we have 200 users. And then I could select additional stuff like RTLS and so on. I want to select uh, on-premise architecture. And that's it. Now I'm done my configuration. I can review it and click. I've created a new project. So now it's time to create the plan. I click Customize here. And now it opens the Ekahau Pro. On the, on the background, which does the actual planning. I have here a reminder of the steps that I need to carry out. There are only four steps. First, I set that I add the map. 
and I suddenly, I surprisingly have the map here. Next, I set the scale. So let's say this is 100 meters. Probably it's more than that, but for the sake of simplicity, it's 100 meters. Then we define the area where we want to plan the Wi-Fi network. So I'm selecting the outer walls here. We're saying that this is the entire floor now. And, and since we know that the, the scale, it automatically calculates the dimensions. And then I draw some walls here. So I'm not going to draw every single wall here, but let's say we have some dry walls um, here uh, on, the, on the left and, and one more here on the right. And now I've actually carried all the manual steps that I need to do to create the plan. So then I just click create the plan. And now the, 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 the planner starts to work on the background, creating three different options, uh, the, three different versions of the network. There's the gold version, there's a silver version, and there's the bronze version. And all of them come with a the, with the different type of access points and slightly different amount of access points. And now you can see the planner running on the background. I'm actually not doing anything here. I'm just waiting. And everything gets synchronized to the cloud automatically. So you just wait for a minute until the plans are finished. And then the, then the tool will tell you that, OK, now everything is done. And I'm, now it's time to move back to the planner. And I just refresh here. And now I can see all of those three plans that I created. I have the cold package, silver and bronze. And, and then I can see the heat map. So how did the planner locate the access points and how many of them? It, it's all green. It looks good. I can see the preliminary bill of materials. And now I can export it to the CZW, which will then create the official bill of materials out of this. And that's it. That's how you create a Wi-Fi plan in the Empire State Building in three minutes. Wow. <laughs> it's actually really intuitive. Uh, and uh, well, basically, cool thing that I'm I'm actually an old, uh, old time fan of Ekahal Planner, and the way it looks uh, for such version is so good and so intuitive. I think it would be super easy to use. That's thank you. That's uh, that's uh, what was actually one of the critical uh, goals for the for the entire design process on on, on this workflow that we want to make it very intuitive and we want to make it easy to use because this is not necessarily something where you want to spend hours and hours of time. It's not the time for that yet, right? This is still an, an early stage and we want to have an educated, like a more than educated guest, but we want to have a preliminary plan on which do we base the, the offer and the quote. Wow. So, so you, were, you were talking about uh, the different uh, phases of the network lifecycle, the design, the validate, you optimize, the troubleshoot, and then going back into the design. And I think you uh, have something new to share with us because for some reason, every time when, you, when we are meeting, you always have something new to share with us. So, uh, so please, please uh, give us the, uh, the new product introduction again. So. I'm 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 amazed. You you are you are very well informed. You you must you must have so many sources of information. Where you I know my people. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but you're absolutely right. We do have a we do have a new product coming up. Um, you you guys see this? Yes, uh -huh. we see it. These are all your all your uh, your holiday homes. <laughs> I, I I wish. Okay. Good locations. Yeah, great locations. Um, so, so we have been working for the for the past twelve months. We have been uh, we have been working very hard on, on on developing analytics. And and the the common challenge. This is designed mostly for large network owners and system integrators. And the common challenge that they have today that when you have a large team working with you, you you actually you collect a ton of data. Mm -hmm. So it may be design, it may be uh, maybe survey data, it may be troubleshooting data. But when you have a large team, you don't actually have much of an, much options. Either you keep sending those files back and forth via email or maybe you have a shared folder. But uh, those mm -hmm. are very error prone. So there's no version control and, and you can't be sure if it's been if you are looking at the latest version and if you have all the data. Mm -hmm. So since we have the cloud backend, we thought, we want to introduce an analytic solution on top of that. And the first use cases that we, that we wanted to implement was how do you easily share and visualize the data that you already have. 
and, and for this purpose, um, we have uh, we're using different um, elements, like for example, map interface and, and dashboards, and I will show you those in a minute. The second use case is that if you take it to the next level, is that how do you troubleshoot by using this information? So if let's say that you you have you are owner network owner of multiple locations and you would like to centrally troubleshoot or find out what's going on in each of those locations, you basically today you need to open the survey files and try to find it yourself. And this is the process we wanted to automate so that the system would do it all, do it for you. And then the third step, as you as you Steven mentioned earlier, uh, AI. Funny enough. We had some time, besides the, the fake background, we had some time to also uh, develop further intelligence on top of it. So, so even so more in the future, we aim to automate the, the discovery process. So you could find out automatically things that are not like they should be, and also create recommendations out of it. So these three use cases were the design principle for this. And let's start, let's start first with the, with the sharing part. So I, I'm using it with the browser. I'm, I'm log logged in with my, with my Connect credentials. And here I can see all of the data that I either have collected myself or that has been shared with me. And I have a map interface and then I have some tables here below. And with the map interface, I can easily zoom in and see then the individual locations. Or I could just on a visual glance that how many sites do I have and which countries. And obviously the red color means something. So red is bad, good, green is good. As it very often is, yes. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's intuitive, isn't it? Um, so here I have a, a, a tabular format of the same data. So I have all of my sites, and for all of my sites, I have the last survey date. So if I wanted to find out, for example, when was the last survey conducted, I can see that in Warehouse Brazil, uh, the last survey was conducted actually two days ago. Or if I wanted to look a Wi-Fi score, so what's the... Uh, What's the estimation of the quality of the network based on that data? I could easily find my best or my worst sites. Or if I wanted to find out, for example, network issues, I can see that there are some networks that where have more issues but has been, have been discovered than in the others. And then we're just looking at the same here in a, in a, in a, in a, in a graph format so that we can, we can rank them and we can see the average and we can see which are above the average and which are below the average. Then I have two more tables here. Uh, first one here, network inventory. So these are all the, um, all the access points that have been discovered during the survey events. So we can see the vendor and the generation and the site and the number of access points. And then I have um, a, a table of survey events. So who has been conducting surveys, how long it took, what was the distance, and, and, and then more details on what was discovered during the survey. So you can even combine multiple Ekahau accounts to the same database. Do I, do I get that well? Absolutely. So we have defined here access levels so that there is the owner of the data. You can have full access data. You can, you can uh, write to it or you can just read it. So you can combine as many accounts and we haven't even limited it to an organization. So you can combine as many as accounts as you wish. And so it could, it could even be an IT partner that has associated account to multiple of his customers and they can actually share data among them. Absolutely. Or wow. if, okay. you think about, if you think about the case that where you, when you have shareholders who don't have Ekahau licenses, you can also mm -hmm. invite them as viewers here so they can okay. see their okay. own data. So for example, when working with customers who, uh, who don't necessarily, who are not Wi-Fi professionals and don't have dedicated licenses, they can see their data here. So wow. that's, the, that's the starting point, right? And, and all of this is synchronized automatically by, by using the cloud backend. So every time you do a survey, it uploads it and, and it gets displayed here. So there's no manual work. I mentioned earlier that if I wanted to invite more viewers here, I can just click manage here. And, and then I can add more, more users who can either view or comment or edit the data. Got it. I can select the um, um, a floor. Mm -hmm. And what we can see here again, green is good, right? Green is good, again. <laughs> so, so we can select what type of, of heat map we want to analyze. And, and we, want, we can see... Are we still in the Empire State Building, by the way? <laughs> Unfortunately, We're no. in Finland. <laughs> We're moving yeah, so the, fast. The, the buildings, are, buildings are a little bit smaller in Finland. Um, so scale is not 100 meters here. 
Um, I can select also a single access point if I want to find out only, only the quality of the network in a certain area. So, so when I scroll down um, here, I can see I can see then the individual areas. So, so our guys have done the design so that they have different design areas. And then I can see the quality statistics for each of the areas. And this, in this case, the, the main, main cause or main problem seems to be in corner lounge, where only 67% of the area fulfills our design criteria. And same goes with the secondary signal strength. And, and this is the area that we need to improve. And this is the information you can also, also find out from the, um, uh, from the heat map. Nice. Mm. Okay, nice. so the score, let's say, is a cum cumulative value that we get, got from all these parameters, RSSI, SNR, and all the others. Is that right? Absolutely. So this is the, the score is based on not only these three, but also on other metrics that we are collecting mm -hmm. from, the, uh, from the survey. And, and we are always comparing those uh, against the good, uh, known good design principles so that these scores are comparable. They are not directly related to the requirements of, the, of that particular design, but they are related to good uh, known, known design principles. So that's why every single site is, is actually, and the score for every single site is comparable. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, so that's it. That's, uh, that's the analytics part in a few minutes. I see a lot of value here and I think that you're actually tackling uh, a lot of the, the problems and a lot of the issues that uh, even the more experienced Wi-Fi engineers face on a daily basis. And uh, I'm very enthusiastic to see all the product development that Ekaha is doing. So um, congratulations on this new, new feature. That's good to hear. And, and if, you, if you really think about it, that how much data do we actually have from the design from the survey, from the troubleshooting phases. Now, this is obviously the tip of an iceberg. We need to start from somewhere, but there is so much more analysis we can do based on this data, just to make it easier to cover the entire life cycle of a, of a Wi-Fi network. And I think that if you keep on developing on this train, uh, I can only imagine what are the, the, the new features that you're gonna add to it later on. And adding artificial intelligence, machine learning on top of it, I see a lot of powerful uh, use cases there yes awesome absolutely so we are we are building the story ekaha on every location and, and and that's the that's the direction where we are going here as well that although it is on every location it doesn't need to be isolated or disconnected true so ansi um as part of the the basement series we always have two questions that we ask everyone and uh, one of that questions is can you show us your home wi-fi setup and um, I, I'm pretty confident that you uh, have an interesting Wi-Fi network where you are right now. Is this your home, Ansi? I, I wish. Actually, my, uh, my Wi-Fi design is, is very, very simple. I, I hope I had something more elegant to show you. But if I, if I just take you to see how it is. Looks so real, huh? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. unbelievable how to make this background. So I have, a, I have a single access point on my wall. Uh-huh. And mm -hmm. then I, that's connected to a cloud controller. Uh-huh. And, and that's it. And that's then I it? Have a, then I have an elf guarding it here. So he's the, he's the guy who's responsible for managing it. I love that. <laughs> but I, I, I want to pause on the background that you have. This is amazing. Wow. <laughs> this is, I, I a, think the most beautiful work spot that I've seen so far. Thank you. It's, uh, we, are, we are very fortunate that we are lucky in a sense that this is actually something we, which is still uh, somehow work in progress. But uh, it happened to be as crazy as the last year was. I, I feel that we are very lucky that we have an opportunity to get out of the town every now and then and, and, and be, be, in, be in the middle of the nature. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, hey, uh, yeah. since you asked about the Wi-Fi, I actually, there's a second part of my Wi-Fi. And it's this one here. What is it? What was that? Huawei. It's a, it's a, it's a small Wi-Fi dongle because I have three boys. So we have three boys. <laughs> and every time when they come over, they eat all the bandwidth. They eat the entire Wi-Fi. Whatever they do, they play or they use YouTube and then they stream videos. And I can't get any work done. So when they come over here, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm a little bit ashamed to admit, but this is the one they get to use. <laughs> I love that. 
<laughs> so you have a physical separation of wireless I have physical separation. I'm, I'm fully in control of the passwords <laughs> on that <laughs> access points, and this is the only one they get. That is well, brilliant. Well, it makes sense. <laughs> that is brilliant. Makes I so love that. Makes so much sense. Okay, so the second traditional question that we ask uh, every guest uh, is about a um, day of work that you never forget. And I'm pretty sure since you have a rich working experience, you have not the only one, but if you have the one that you would like to highlight, we'd like to listen. Oh, that's... Uh, actually, um, you know what? That, that, that one day in my life, an un un unforgettable day, is, involves both of you too. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. What? What is it? So you remember a year ago we were we were in this uh, in in the in the great event in the in the Cisco Live in Barcelona, and mm -hmm. I, I had very recently started with Ekahau and I w I was new also to the Wi-Fi industry. And then you then you guys asked, okay, can we do this uh, stage show? And I was like, yeah, okay, why don't we why don't we present something? And I was uh, you know I don't know what to expect. And then then you guys had this uh, this uh, this great idea that why don't we, uh, there was a superhero theme, right? And, Correct. And uh, um, Stephen, I think you were the superhero and Sophia, you were a sidekick of a superhero. And, and <laughs> I was a sidekick of a sidekick with the, with the with Ekahau sidekick. <laughs> That's how we got started. <laughs> That's true, yes. Yeah, uh, uh, we, were, uh, we were wearing in that event, we were wearing green shirts. So and I had a we had a white Ekaha caps and I thought that okay this looks a little bit like a, like a Luigi brothers from from Super Mario game he's a, he's a famous sidekick as well so you remember I had this big mustache I, I was wearing on the stage I was uh, I was um, I was playing the Luigi game and 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 then the part of this this whole presentation was that uh, we wanted to also demonstrate the the impact of uh, interference to the uh, to the Wi-Fi network. And, and instead of yes. doing it in the ordinary way, we, we had a micro state, microwave oven on the stage. I, I, I remember <laughs> that I was on the call with you and I said, uh, Ansi, uh, is there a possibility we can do it with a microwave oven? And, and then you said, sure, do you have a microwave? And I said, no, I don't have one. Can you get one? And you were like, uh, sure. <laughs> so on that morning, I went to our local electronics store in Barcelona. I brought a microwave oven. I dragged it to the uh, to the event, and and then we started uh, basically uh, a little bit before the presentation. Um, I mean, usually when when you do a presentation, you practice the slides, so you make the system, or you make sure your your computer works and all of that. And instead, we've just made popcorn. <laughs> That's, that was our preparation. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and it was like a. It was like a big event. It was the, the hall was huge. I don't know, 500 or probably more than 500 people mm -hmm. in the room. And, and, yeah. and then we go and, and we do all of this, this superhero microwave popcorn uh, presentation. And, and I remember walking back to the hotel evening wearing my mustache and carrying the microwave oven. This wasn't, this wasn't really a, like, a, like an ordinary day in the office. <laughs> That's something I'll, I'll, I'll always remember. Uh, thank you for bringing it up. It's so yes. lovely. <laughs> you, you remember uh, the feedback that we got from the audience. So apparently the, the, the audience thought the same way. So they, they appreciate the effort that we had put to, to make it a bit more colorful. They did like it. Yes, that's true. That's true. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm honored that your favorite day in your career was actually with us. So uh, mm. <laughs> that is really cool. All right. I thank think um, with that, we are at the end of the show. So um, I would like to uh, give you a, a, a big thank you, Ansi, uh, for making the time for us. It was an honor to see you again. And I really hope that uh, we can do it somewhere soon again in a real event. That's, uh, thank you so much for having me. I, uh, I, I think these are always, always great events doing with you. And uh, I, I, um, I really hope someday things are different than we can do it in live. Absolutely. But you know what? I have one more thing for you. Since, uh, since we are in Finland and when you have, after you have a great meeting, do you know what you do? What is the customer? You go to a sauna. Exactly that. <laughs> so You're going to say goodbye no to us in the sauna? I have my sauna here. Um, uh, I'm not sure. I hope it's not too dark. You can, you can see it. Ooh. That is brilliant. 
And the good thing is that I have um, I have glass wall here, so so the Wi-Fi covers goes all the way. <laughs> all the, goes all the way to sauna, so we can. Uh, you guys sit here on the top shelf, and I I'll, I'll sit, I sit here in the middle. Oh, now video should become blurry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> With that, I love it. Thank you. Ansi, great to see you again. Sylvia, have a great Thank day. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. See you later. Thank you.